G'day wherever you are around the world and thank you for your company. It is time for Hebrew Roots on Truth To You. I'm Jono and joining me is Jason Spiritual Babies. G'day Mr. Spiritual Babies. G'day Jono, good morning. How are you my friend? I'm good. That's, That's good. good. I'm glad yeah. you're good. Hey, now listen, uh, yep. you have got a new uh, Facebook page. Can we tell everyone about that? Yeah, sure. I've taken uh, all the content that I make, um, the videos and all the little pictures, and I've uh, put them onto one specific page on Facebook. So um, you can go there and pull it off and you don't have to worry about there being silly stories and dialogue. So if you go to Spiritual Babies, type that into Facebook and the kind of uh, the creative page will come up and link there to the YouTube stuff. And you don't have to go to YouTube. You can do everything on the site. It's pretty cool. It's growing every day. So um, if people go there and give it a like and have a look at my stuff and share it, that'd be great. Beautiful. Go to Spiritual Babies page, like it and uh, engage with the information. Now, uh, not only that, uh, Jason, Spiritual Babies, but there is also the website, which is spiritualbabies.net. That's correct? Right. Spiritualbabies.net. So let me just say to everyone, if you're enjoying what, I mean, all the videos, the video that you're watching right now, Jason, Spiritual Babies does those. He labors over those. He sweats over a hot computer. And, Blood, sweat, uh, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears, and gets them all together. But it's uh, it's it's not something that is um, well. You know, it, you sort of subscribe to some expensive kind of gear to do this, right? Yeah, there's a, a, a package, an art package, which allows me um, the access to various different software, from the graphic software to the video software to the audio software to animation software, and uh, all of that. Yeah, there's there's quite an ex it's quite ex there's expensive. A, there's, there's a little bit involved. <laughs> there's a little bit expensive. So I just want to say to the listeners, if you are blessed by these videos, these Hebrew Roots videos that we are doing, and you enjoy the shiny videos that Mr. Spiritual Babies makes, which is so great, and I really like them. You can, if you feel so inclined, give back to spiritualbabies.net. There is a donation button there, and your contributions, your uh, support would be greatly appreciated. So uh, if you go to spiritualbabies.net, there is a donation button, a PayPal donation button, which you can click on and contribute back to the work that Jason Spiritual Babies is doing. There we go. I'd be very grateful. Thanks very much. And thank you, my friend, for making such great videos. Now, we are continuing in the epistle to the Hebrews, right? Right. We are. Um, we are going through them a little bit every week. Now, and, we said, um, well, now, come on. We did say to everyone we were going to do it chronologically, but we didn't really mean that, did we? Well, you know, we did. We're going to go for it chronologically in the order that we find them. Yeah, that'll do. That's, that's what we meant. And <laughs> and what we want to do is investigate four things. We want to see what does it say in the Hebrews? What does it say in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the epistle to the Hebrews? Um, where is the author? Who is the author, by the way? We do not know. Haven't a clue what's going on there, but I'm going to refer to him as what's his name. You know what? It might be what's her name. Right. For well, we do know, don't we, that it's kind of, it was... It's produced very early on. Yeah, I mean, sure. it kind of predates a lot of the other stuff. But we don't know who did it. And we, what we do know no. is that uh, uh, the author, what's his name or what's her name, he quotes uh, from the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Tanakh. And uh, we want to find out what that says. What does it say in the original Hebrew? And, 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 and what is the purpose of the passage in its original context? So that's some of the things that we want to have a look at. So, Jason, spiritual babies, what, which passage are we looking at today? I think today we are in Hebrews 8, and um, we're hovering around the 10 to 13 mark. We are, you know what? I want to go from 7, if that's all right. In fact, you all know right. what? I want, to go yep. a little bit, I want to go a little bit further back, because okay. uh, we, did do the, we, we did the Melchizedek thing. People can find that right. in, uh, in the Hebrew Roots section, truth to you org, truth number 2 letter org, and you can see Hebrew Roots. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, the, the archive of Jason Spiritual Babies and I doing these sessions for uh, of Hebrew roots. You can click on the annotation, which will be on your screen right now. There you and go. Take straight there. But okay. then, then it'll cut them off. You know, open it up in another tab. Otherwise, you'll will be gone. You have to start again. Oh, it's totally going to open in another tab. Is it? It's okay. I can save it for later on. Man, you're clever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So you'll see Melchizedek there. We did that one. We did that, okay? Now, the reason why I want to go back is because in, in uh, chapter 8, verse 7, it says, uh, for, that, <laughs> for if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Now, it has to be acknowledged, Mr. Spiritual Babies, that the word covenant is in italics because the word covenant isn't in the verse. It's inserted there. And, you know, some funny sort of, you know, theories and theology about that as to whether it actually refers to the covenant. 
so or whether it refers refers to the priesthood. And uh, so I want to go back to say, ooh, 722, it says, um, after talking about Melchizedek, we've dealt with that, it says, by so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Uh, it goes on in uh, verse 8 to say, now this is the main point of the things we are saying. I like the main point. I like it when people get to the point. I kind of like the information in a nutshell first and then go back and look at the details afterwards. But this is the, uh, this is the main point. Uh, what's his name or what's her name says of the things that we are saying, we have such a high priest. And in verse 6, uh, they go on to say, he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. And it's the next verse that says, for if that first covenant, which isn't in the text, if that first had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Now, I, based on that, I think it's fair. I think it's fair that it is about the covenant. I think it's fair that the text inserts the word covenant there because, you know, in the context of, of the epistle of Hebrews, it kind of, you know, it flows. It, I mean, it just it makes sense. However, just to placate everybody and make everybody happy, you know, uh, Mr. Spiritual Babies, there's, a, uh, there's another, another ministry called uh, testeverything.net, testeverything.net, right. which is uh, or otherwise known as 119 Ministries, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 119, every now and then, they come out with some really good graphic, kind of like what you do, right? And, yeah, uh, they're, they're really fantastic. There's some graphics. really shiny stuff. They got some shiny stuff. I like shiny things. And uh, every now and then they, they get a verse and they put it in. And, and the other day, they reminded me that the covenant is everlasting. And they, they put out one that said, uh, let's see, it was Isaiah 24 verse 5. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, and uh, broken the everlasting covenant. Isaiah 24 verse 5. I thought, that is cool. I'd like to be reminded of that. That's And it's all, it looks pretty cool. They also had another one, by the way, uh, which I really appreciated. It said, it said, if the law of God is forever, when did forever become temporary? And, and in the middle of that, they've got a few different ones. They've got uh, the Sabbath equals forever, covenant equals forever, uh, his law equals forever, his word equals forever. We can say amen to all of those, and they've got scripture passages for each of those. And when it comes to covenants, it's uh, First Chronicles 16, 15. So there's a couple of uh, excellent, really good uh, verses that they have highlighted, which shows that the covenant is forever. So they certainly agree. Mr. Spiritual Babies, there's, there's one thing that I noticed uh, about this, this wonderful, uh, shiny uh, little sign that they made on Facebook, uh, 119. They left something out, and that is, of course, the priesthood. Now, the interesting thing about the word forever, Mr. Spiritual Babies, is that in the Hebrew, in each of these verses that they've quoted, including the one that I quoted before from Isaiah in regards, regarding the everlasting covenant, each of these verses uses the word Olam, and Olam is uh, forever. It's Strong's number 5769, 5769, Olam. And they're quite right when they say, when did forever become temporary? Because in Christian theology, Sunday Christian theology, that's usually what you get to hear is that, well, forever doesn't mean forever. It just means for a long time until, you know, we don't like forever anymore, and then it means something else. And so... But they, they're absolutely right. The Sabbath is forever. The covenant is forever. His law is forever. His word is forever. The word olam is used in all of the verses that they have quoted there. But uh, also, I just want to highlight that whether Hebrews 8 verse 8 is, is in reference to the covenant or if it is referenced to the uh, priesthood, both of them are forever. And if you look at, uh, let's see, Exodus 29 verse 9, what do you got? Which, which, which Bible are you looking at? Um, the Holman. The priesthood is to be theirs by a permanent statute. Ooh. This is the way you will ordain Aaron and his sons. Permanent. I, I've actually got a perpetual statute because they don't like using the word forever for some reason in the Christian translations. This is in the New King James uh, version. They've got perpetual. But if you look it up, it's actually Olam. Now, another one, just a few pages on. the Chapter 40, verse 15. Okay. Exodus forty fifteen. Anoint them just as you anointed their father, so that they may serve me as priests. Their anointing will serve to inaugurate a permanent priesthood 
for them throughout their generations. Hey, that's not bad. Permanent priesthood again. I've got everlasting priesthood in this case, though it's the same word. They don't use perpetual. Here they use everlasting. I like that one a little bit better, but it is actually forever. Um, and again, the word is olam. Another one, uh, Numbers 25.13. It will be a covenant of perpetual priesthood for him and his descendants, because he was zealous for God and made atonement. There it is. Israelites. Perpetual priesthood, I've got everlasting again, and uh, that once again, the word is olam. So uh, I would just say that uh, the priesthood is forever. Clearly, there's just three, and there are many, many verses, but there's three uh, that use that particular word. And so when it comes to uh, whether it's the covenant or whether it's the priesthood, I just want to remind everybody, and let's just confirm from the very beginning before we read this passage, both the covenant and the priesthood, according to our Creator, is Olam, is forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Grand. All right, so that's where it begins here in uh, verse 7. It says, um, if that first covenant or if the first priesthood either either had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second, because finding fault with them, he says, and it goes on to say, now, do I want to read, should I read this or should we deal with the finding fault part? Because where, where we're going is we're about to read from uh, verse 8 on to verse uh, 12 is actually a passage out of Jeremiah. And, uh, and when we go to Jeremiah to find uh, what it says in the Hebrew, then we need to look at the verse before, the first uh, few verses before, to see where he found fault with them and why he says what he's about to say. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Well, let's do that. So what, what I'll do is uh, let's jump over to Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34 is uh, the passage that the, uh, what's his name or what's her name, is quoting from. But we need to go a little bit before that to see, you know, what, what it was that he found faults, the fault that he found, so that he said what he's about to say. And if we go back just a couple of verses, it says, In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Verse 30. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. What does that mean? It's, um, it's familiar, isn't it? We have that verse somewhere else. Where else do we have it? Am I thinking uh, Ezekiel? Ezekiel! That's where it is. It's Ezekiel chapter 18. It says... Uh, the word of Jehovah came to me again, saying, What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, says Jehovah, actually it says, as I live, says Adonai Jehovah, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. And then there's a whole, there's, there's, there's a, a, a great amount of detail to make a point, because he's kind of cranky about this. They're saying that uh, the, the, the guilt of the fathers is transferred to the son, and they pay the penalty for the, for the fathers. The soul who sins shall die. But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, uh, and verse 9, he has walked in my statutes and kept, kept my judgments faithfully, he is just, he shall surely live, says Adonai Yehovah. But if he's done these abominations, it says in 13, he shall surely die, his blood shall be upon him. Uh, but if he has executed my judgments and walked in my statutes, he shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live, says verse 17. It goes on to say in verse 20, the soul who sins, Mr. Spiritual Baby, the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father. Did you hear that? The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon him in the end and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. And it goes on and it talks about that in great detail. And it, go, it, it, it ends, it ends with, for why should you die, O house of Israel? In, in fact, before that, I love this, this great verse, verse 30. Verse 30, let's go from verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says Adonai Yehovah, repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you, all the transgression which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of, in the, death of the one who dies, says Adonai Jehovah. Therefore, turn and live. Amen. 
That's awesome, isn't it? Oh, that's just, this is seriously, Ezekiel 18 is one of the coolest, yeah, fantastic. coolest chapters of the Bible. I love it so much. And of course, he's quoting directly from Deuteronomy 24, 16. Now, just really quickly, uh, he's quoting from the Torah, and it says, uh, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall children be put to death for their father's persons shall be put to death for his own sin. So, they were quoting this. Mr. Spiritual Babies, they were quoting this still in Israel. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. And he doesn't like that. And it says uh, in in Hebrews, uh, for finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day I took them by the hands to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant, I disregarded them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. And each person will not teach his fellow citizen, and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to their wrongdoings, and I will never remember their sins again. That is, that's pretty cool. Where it says, uh, I will put their, the law, my laws, my Torah, in their mind and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And none of them will Imagine teach. Imagine that. Imagine that. Okay. When that happens, that's going to be really cool, oh. because uh, none of, none of, no one will need to say to his brother or his neighbor, saying, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the greatest to the least. And that hasn't happened yet, but I tell you what, when it does, we won't be doing this anymore. No. Yeah. And I won't be standing in the grocery store checking every jar for, no. <laughs> for gelatin. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. It's just, it's having a look at the ingredients and making sure that we're not buying anything that has you know non-food in it. Right. Okay. So, but there is a couple of things here that we have to deal with before we move on. One of them is, and it has to, we have to say, you know, I mean, the Septuagint pretty much says, almost has it spot on, but there's just one thing, isn't there, that isn't quite right. And it's found, I think, in verse, verse nine. So verse nine says, uh, not according to you know, the covenant that I made with their fathers uh, in the day when I took them from the hand and led them out to the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says Yehovah. But disregarded them? Now, we have to go, and before we read on, we've got to go to where it's quoting in, in Jeremiah. Can I read this one? Yeah, sure. All right. Well, this is, this is actually where he's quoting from, and I'm going to read it uh, just from the Tanakh. It says, from verse 31, Behold, the days are coming, says Yehovah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant, which they broke, Though I was a husband to them, says Yehovah. Hang on a minute. Did you get that? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. Uh, mine says, and though I espoused them. Oh, wow. Which is along the same kind of lines. I was a partner to them. It's not a word that you get to use very often. No, it's not, not at all. Spouse. <laughs> yeah. Well, last time it was thus. Now we have espoused. I think we should do one every week. I know. It adds, <laughs> adds to my vocabulary every time. But, 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 but what it says in, uh, in the Septuagint is it says, and according to Hebrews, it says, and I disregarded them, says Yehovah. Yeah, very two, two very different things. Okay, so that just needs to be pointed out. Uh, Hebrews says, uh, though I disregarded them, uh, the book of Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews, but the actual Hebrews says, though I was a husband to them, or though I though espoused, espoused them. them. <laughs> very nice. Though I espoused them. And, uh, and it goes on to say in verse 33, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yehovah, I will put my law, my Torah in their minds and I write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, Yehovah, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yehovah, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. That is just so awesome. What a great passage. It really is exceptionally cool. In, <laughs> now, I want to come back to another one of 911. And g'day to everyone at 911, because I know they listen. Uh, no, no, not 911. 119. Yeah, 1911. <laughs> yeah, bit of an emergency. 
uh, <laughs> testeverything.net, because they made another one. And it says, hmm, so the new covenant is to have all the law in our heart. And I agree, you know, because a lot of people get confused with this. They think we're already in the so-called new covenant. But the only thing that's new about the new covenant is to have it written on our heart. And they actually quote Jeremiah 31, 33. They also quote Ezekiel 36, 27. Quite rightfully, it says, I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Spot on. Right. And this is, incidentally, this is what the Jews refer to as the... Uh, uh, the universal knowledge of God. This is what we're, what we're waiting for. It hasn't happened yet. Looking forward to it, it may be today. However, yes. Mr. Spiritual Babies, this is not the most controversial part. The most controversial part, and this is the part I want to deal with, is, uh, is actually verse 13. So you were going to read that. Do you want to read that now? This is uh, Hebrews 8, verse 13. Let's go for it. By saying a new covenant, he was declaring that the first is old, and what is old is, and aging is about to disappear. Wow. Okay, let me, let me read what I've got. I've got, in that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Now, we've already dealt with the fact that the covenant is olam. It is forever. Uh, so I'm not going to get into the theology of that, but that's something to keep in mind. What I do want to say is that verse 13, obviously, is the words of what's his name or what's a name. Uh, and obviously not quoting from the Tanakh. The important thing is this, Mr. Spiritual Babies, what does it say in the Tanakh? Uh, instead of saying uh, that it's that this, this covenant's been, the first covenant's been made obsolete and it's going to vanish and grow old and, you know, go away, what does it actually say? What does it continue on to say in verse 35 of Jeremiah 31? Thus says the Lord who established the sun for light by day, and the moon and the stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea unto roaring waves, whose name is Jehovah of hosts. Mm. If these laws should ever be annulled by me, declares the Lord, only then would the offspring of Israel cease to be a nation before me for all time. Mm. Amen. Amen. Keep it going. Keep it going. There's another verse. Okay. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens above could be measured and the foundations of the earth below could be fathomed, only then would I reject all of the offspring of Israel for all that they have done, declares the Lord. That is, isn't that cool? Fantastic. Isn't, isn't that so cool? So if, uh, if the ordinances of the, of the moon and the stars and, uh, and the sun uh, and, and, the, and the seas and the waves, uh, Yehovah Sebaot is his name. Amen. If those ordinances depart... From before me, says Jehovah, <laughs> and the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever, forever. Thus says Jehovah, if the, if the heavens above can be measured, clearly they cannot, and the foundations of the earth be uh, searched out beneath, and they <laughs> clearly cannot, uh, I will also cast off the seed of Israel for all that they have done. So it says he will not cast them off. He will not cast them off. And Israel will not cease, and they will continue to be a nation before him forever. Oh, that is so great. Now, that's a little bit different to what uh, the vibe that I get from Hebrews. It says, oh, it's, you know, first is obsolete and coming old and going to vanish away. But you know what? You know what, Mr. Spiritual Babies? These words in, in Jeremiah 31, from verse 35 to 37, it reminds me of something else. Do you know what that is? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at this page. Um, I've got my large study Bible open. And heavens... Um, and and the word earth are on top of each other, and it kind of reminds me of Matthew five seventeen. But you know, there are some things that I just think are so just shining gems that Yeshua uh, taught, and this is certainly one of them. This one, this is a winner. Uh, so this is Matthew. This is from the Sermon of the Mount, Matthew chapter five, verses seven. Give it to us through to nineteen. Do you want to do that? Yeah, sure. Done. Okay. Don't assume that I came to destroy the law. Or the prophets. I say I destroy the Torah or the prophets. Mm. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. For I, and shouldn't we all? Right. Yes. Mm. <laughs> For I assure you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or one stroke of a pen will pass from the Torah until all things are accomplished. And so, mm. yeah, that, that echoes that very strongly for me. Because um, as long as uh, his uh, Torah is perfection forever, and mm. so uh, Jeremiah 31 tells us that the heaven and earth are really the two witnesses to that. So as long as we have those witnesses and we know that our covenant is still in place. 
Amen. Amen. For a, in the words of, of Yeshua, for assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away. And compare that with what is said in the book in Hebrews in verse 13, the last verse of chapter 8. Again, some uh, homework for the listeners. How's that? Do we, do we want to add anything else to that? Yeah, uh, Jeremiah um, thirty three nineteen and on is a good verse, and I think that would fit in nicely. Go on. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night cease to come at the regular time, then also my covenant with my servant David may be broken, so that he will not have a son reigning on his throne, and the Levitical priests will not be my ministers. The host of heaven cannot be counted, and the sand of the sea cannot be measured. So too, I will make the descendants of my servant David and the Levites who minister me innumerable. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Have you not noticed what these people have said? They say, the Lord has rejected the two families he has chosen. My people are treated with contempt and no longer regarded as a nation among them. This is what the Lord says. If you do not keep my covenant with the day and with the night and fail to establish the fixed order of heaven and earth, then I might also reject the seed of Jacob and of my servant David, not taking from his descendants rulers over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore their fortunes and have compassion on them. Oh, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. That is just icing on the cake as far as what we've just talked about. And again, that is uh, Jeremiah. Thanks for that. Jeremiah 33, verse 19, through to the end of the chapter, verse 26. Thank you, Jason, spiritual babies for that and uh, I, I think we're done and so uh, once again spiritualbabies.net is uh, the website Jason Spiritual Babies and you'll also find Spiritual Babies the page on Facebook go there like that and uh, and I think we're done so thank you my friend no thank you very much excellent so uh, until next time dear listeners be blessed be set apart by the truth the truth of our father's word Shalom. Shalom